Well, hey guys, we're going to do another little quick episode um, of Radar Scope 101. It's going to be episode four. We've got some severe weather in our area, and what I'm going to do today is actually use the uh, distance tool. I'm going to talk about the distance tool. But before I do that, I've got my laptop here, and We've got some uh, some products here. I've got Storm Lab, and then I've got GR Level Three, and I'm just going to kind of do a, a quick comparison, if you will, uh, from from GR Three to uh, to Storm Lab. And uh, well, I may do I may not do Storm Lab. We'll just do GR Three to um, Radar Scope. And Radar Scope, right now, we as you guys can tell, we've got a pretty good sell around Windsor, uh, just north of me, north and east of me, Loveland, Windsor, Severance, Fort Collins, to the east of Fort Collins, and it is severe. Uh, we're going to do this one more time. You guys can click on the box itself, the yellow box. If there's a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, you can click on that box, and obviously it'll pull up the, uh, the severe thunderstorm warning information. It expires in 20 minutes, and then we're going to uh, we're going to click on that little soft button, if you will, or soft key, what I keep calling soft key, and that's going to give you again one more time. I know I've been through this, but that's going to give you the uh, National Weather Service text regarding that particular warning, their verbiage on that particular warning. You can just click done when you're finished. Um, and of course, this cell is moving to the south and east. We've got some other stuff. That's trying to go up, but but that's really the best sell of the day in this particular area. So now that I've brought GR level three up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and look at level three um, in comparison to radar scope. And as you guys can tell, nothing wrong with level three, guys. I I like level three. I've, I use it. There is a reason why it's on the laptop. Uh, of course, you can still you can see I've got my spotter icons on, things of this nature. You've got a flood warning here. You, you can click on the icon as well here. And, and of course, it's going to give you the NWS text. And, and there are many features that uh, level three has that GR has uh, that, that are nice. But the one thing that I don't like... And, and I'm, I'm assuming that you guys um, will probably not like it either, so to speak. And that is the fact that level three is pulled this data from Ritter Scope as well as GR is pulled from the same server. Uh, the problem here is that Level three itself is smoothed. It's really smoothed out. Now you can change that setting in here, but I'm not gonna get into that. Today's, we're, we're, today is not about uh, uh, GR level three. I'm not gonna diss it. I've used it for years. It's a wonderful product. And for those that have it, kudos to you. Uh, it does have a lot of features, but it's, you know, it's on the laptop, guys. Uh, half the time, 99% of the time, I'm using my phone and or the iPad. Much easier, much quicker, and it is what it is. But this is smooth, what we call smooth. And as you guys can tell, I'll zoom in, and it's it's really smooth. And and, and that's to make it look pretty. That really is what it's for. That's, that's all it's for, is to make it look kind of pretty. If we go down here to Radar Scope, you can see that it's not necessarily smoothed. It is showing the true level three data before any logarithms, smoothing the logarithms are established. So while we see the same product, we see the same storm, it is a heck of a lot smoother. Now, how does that, uh, what's, what's the problem with that and how does that affect it? A lot of times when you see a smooth product like this, it's wonderful, it, it looks pretty, it looks good, the problem is sometimes it cannot depict as quickly as something that is not as smooth. In other words, 
this little notch here, you guys saw this update. Um, it's got a little bit of a notch. It's not tornado worn, but we're and, and certainly the chance is very low. But we're going to just go to, to uh, super res velocity. And you can see we've got some uh, some winds. And again, super res velocity, guys, is basically all it is is which way the winds are blowing and how hard, really. That's the layman's terms. But you can see here uh, just north of Johnstown, uh, north and, and east of Johnstown, there's a little bit of an area that might interest me. Look on uh, GR Level 3. It does not show that area, that same area, by Johnstown. Why? It's not that it's not there. It's seeing a little bit of return here. It's the fact that it's smoothed. And a lot of times without changing that, some folks don't change that. They, they won't, you know, they don't go in and make the actual settings. Um, Storm Lab, actually, you, you can have the level three data, the smooth, or you can use it as such uh, where it's not smooth uh, and pulling much like radar scope, but it's, it's not smooth here, guys. And, and ultimately, look, this is smooth. So I'm going to go to I'm going to go to base uh, velocity here, right up here, as you guys can tell. And it, it, it base velocity, while it's not necessarily smooth, this is the area that I would probably be interested in, if indeed I was out and there was something there. It still doesn't correlate with radar scope. Why? Again, because of the logarithm of smoothing that is turned on automatically on this on this particular product on GR. Now, not knocking it, not dissing it. It is what it is, and it's the way it is. All right. So, with that said, what we're going to do today, the main goal today was actually to use the um, to use the, uh, the 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 distance tool, if you will. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to going to hit the soft key mark my location as you guys can tell and 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 i'm gonna i'm gonna use the distance tool so uh, i know a lot of folks have have asked questions about it and they, and they may not see that i know somebody asked a question i can't see how to get to the to, you know to the distance tool or whatever it on the iphone it's right up top here as you can see right here by my finger all you got to do is just t tap that and it's going to bring your draw tool your distance tool and your inspector tool. Now we kind of went over the inspector tool already. We're going to select the distance tool if you guys can see that. Okay, so the distance tool from my house to that storm and the area of interest that I am interested in, see that right, right there, is roughly 18.1 miles. 18.1 miles to that storm. Uh, the area of interest that I would be interested in. Now that's it, guys. That's 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 how easy it is to use the distance tool. Now, if you wanted to 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 stop the distance tool, uh, you just click on any anywhere on the screen, um, and then of course you would click on the distance tool icon up at the top itself, and there you go. And you can move the screen all all around all however you want to do it or whatever. But again, distance tool, I'll show you one more time here. Distance tool right there. And I know my location, so I'm basically going to start at my location right there where the red dot's at in the blue circle. And I'm going to go right up here to the area. I'm going to drag my finger right up to the area of interest that I think is, you know, is, might be something if I were out chasing today. And now it is 17.9 miles, roughly. About 18 miles. You guys can see that. That's it with the distance tool. That's how easy it is used to, to use the distance tool. So, now that you guys have the distance tool figured out, all you've got to do is to hide this, these soft keys up here, if you will, to hide the bar, just hit the arrow over, and that's going to hide it and bring it back to whatever site you were on. In other words, whatever... Um, WSR-88D dual pole radar site. For, in this case, you can see KFTG Denver. It's going to bring that up, and then it's going to bring up your warnings. And you can click through your warnings accordingly. Flash flood, severe thunderstorm, blah, blah, blah. 
That's how easy it is. Now we're going to click done, and that's going to take us back. But that's how you would use a distance tool. Truly, it is that easy. We're going to kind of keep a watch on this storm and then some of this other stuff blown up by Allen's Park right off the mountains and headed right towards us, as you guys can see. Distance tool uh, is very easy to use, and, and I would encourage you guys to use it. Uh, I do use it when I'm out and about chasing, running the tours. It's a wonderful thing. Now, again, I want to stress that I have no, this is not about GR Level 3, Level 2 data. Um, guys, that's a great product. There's no doubt about it. Storm Lab is a great product. But for me and the tours, whether I'm trying to, 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 to run the tours or actually drop the probe or do whatever I'm trying to do, this is the easiest way for me. This is the easiest product to use. Conversely, the easiest way to use it the phone, the iPad, the whatever, and I'm getting that data that is not smooth uh, and has not had the, the same logarithms uh, um, put on it, if you will. Uh, it, it's very, very nice. So, distance tool explained. There you guys go. In comparison to um, uh, GR Level 3 as far as the smoothing um, and things of that nature. So, next video, I will probably try to do the draw tool. And, and, and teach you guys how to draw uh, on the screen if you guys don't know how to do that already. I hope I've helped to answer some questions. If you guys should have any others, don't hesitate to subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments down below, and I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you taking time to watch.